<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're going to begin the funeral services of Zena Fishbane. Rabbi Ryan Daniels from North Shore Congregation Israel will be officiating. We welcome those of you who are online, and for those of you who are here, please take a moment to be sure that your cell phones have been turned off. begin this morning with that ancient ritual of Kriya, the tearing of garments, such a significant symbol, especially thinking about Zena's passion for needlework, for knitting, for creating those afghans and those sweaters, Sue, that we spoke about on Friday, that wraps each of us throughout our lives. And so we don't want you to tear any of those wonderful things that she gifted to you. And so we place this black ribbon over your heart. David will help you in tearing. This ritual dates back to our Torah. When Jacob learns that his son has passed, he takes the corner of his garment and he tears it as a sign of his mourning. And so you step into that chain of mourners, that chain of tradition. And we'll invite you to do that now. And we'll say the blessing together. It's three Hebrew words. I'll say one word and I'll invite everyone to repeat after me. Baruch Dayan Ha'emet. Which means blessed is the source of truth, of strength. We say together, Amen. Be comfortable again. This week we reflect on the words of our tradition. We know that birth is a beginning and death a destination. And life is a journey. From childhood to maturity and youth to age from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back we pray to health again, for offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, from grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey, stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Earth is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. Come together this morning to remember Zena Fishbane, mom, bubby, aunt, and friend to so many who are joining us quite literally from all around the world to be with you, to comfort you and to offer strength to you, Zena's most beloved, her family. We know that mourning is a time filled with many emotions and many memories, both bitter and sweet. We'll continue now with a recitation of psalms and prayers, thus linking Zena's life with the millennia-old tradition of the people of Israel and the eternity of God. We'll turn to the words of Psalm 23, words spoken by our people throughout the generations as words of comfort, words of memory. I'll say the first line in Hebrew, and then I'll invite you to read the translation with me. It's found in your service handout. Adonai ro i lo echsar, binot desha yarbitseni, omei menucho inachaleni, afshi shovev yancheni b'maglet tzedek l'ma'an shemo. Join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> The sounds of life. We read in the book of Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything. A time for every experience under heaven. A time for being born and a time for dying. A time for planting and a time for uprooting what is planted. A time for destroying and a time for healing. A time for tearing down and a time for building up. A time for weeping a time for laughing, a time for wailing, and a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones, and a time for gathering stones, a time for embracing, and a time for refraining from embraces, a time for seeking, and a time for losing, a time for keeping, and a time for discarding, a time for tearing, and a time for sowing time for silence, a time for speaking. This morning we come together to speak of Zena. Zena Fishbane was the beloved wife of 73 years of the late Bennett. When we spoke on Friday, Ken, you reflected that when anyone referred to mom and dad, it was always as a single entity, always Zena and Bennett. Mom and Dad, Zadie and Bubby. It's impossible, you said, to talk about one without the other, and they loved that. That was the way that they worked. Jennifer, you told me that's how they were in all parts of their life, even when ordering food at a restaurant. Zadie felt the prices were always too high, and Bubby remarked the portions were too large, so they'd share. That's how they worked. They shared coffee from a single mug, even when they were at your home, and there were more than enough mugs to go around and a full pot of coffee to enjoy. More than a partner in all things, Bennett was Zena's biggest fan, too. He raved about her needlework and about the food she'd prepare for Oneg Shabbat. Alan, you remember that Bennett accompanied Zena to business conferences because... That was only proper, but he was there too to help prop her up as well. About your mother-in-law, Nancy, you said, when people talk about Zena, they often discuss her in terms of a typical 50s era Jewish mother, preparing abundant meals that were on the table when her husband came in the door from work, sitting up late into the night with a sick child, deferring to her husband on even the simplest of questions. Do you want a cup of coffee? Overseeing Jewish holidays and running the household. All of these things are true. But she also went back to work when the children were young, even starting her own business. Barbara, you were mom's business partner for 10 years. We had a really good time, you said. It's remarkable that she opened Zena's Knit and Stitch in 1977 a woman-owned small business in Omaha, Nebraska, and then added a second location, too. Zena had all the qualities of a good entrepreneur. And when she sold her business in her 60s, she went back to the workforce as an executive assistant, earning awards for her many talents. She was temp of the year, secured that coveted job at Union Pacific, and she was recognized for her shorthand. But Barbara, you told me that none of those accolades were anywhere near as important to Zena, to mom, to Bubby, as her family. All she ever wanted to talk about was her wonderful children and credited you for her many blessings. 
It was true pride. I'm remembering the geese that joined us at dad's funeral just five months ago. Most importantly, Zena Fishbane will be remembered as the devoted mother of Barbara and Alan, Ken and Nancy and Sue, proud grandmother, Jennifer and Dan and Sarah, Kevin, Annie, Maggie, Ashley, Chelsea, and Michael, cherished great-grandmother, Rachel and Catherine, Jacob, Sam, Ben, and Nathan. She loved you all so much. Alan, you called it unconditional love. And she worried about you too, all the time. Sue, you told me that whenever mom heard a siren, she'd immediately think about calling her children. Jennifer, you joked that everyone was in the accident for sure until proven otherwise, and she saw you pull in, in the driveway or walk in the door. Then she'd run to the pushki. Tragedy could happen at, at any time, and she was so grateful for each blessing as they came. So you pad your estimated times of arrival and you tell her the surgery took a little bit longer than expected. And she was thrilled when you were early. So you also told me that your mother loved to cook your favorite things, all of your favorite things. For your kids, it was Bubby's brownies and cookies and even Kasha for Ashley. Can you remember the elaborate parties growing up at mom and dad's house in Omaha? Everyone was invited. The legendary Christmas Eve extravaganza. A bris they'd so generously throw on Shabbos for new parents. Alan, you remember Zena's Seder table that wrapped all around the house. So long that Zena and Bennett used walkie-talkies to communicate from one end to the other. She made all the food herself, and everything was always delicious and on time. While she never complained about the effort, Catherine, you said that Bubby never gave herself enough credit either. Michael, you reflected on Bubby's unique source of empathy, saying that so many people would be prideful about what Zena did in business and the many gifts that she offered your family, but not Bubby. Rather, Zena embodied and nourished. Zena embodied and was nourished by others' happiness. For anybody who has met Zena, it stays with them. You said. Catherine added, even after only one encounter. It's so rare to find that type of person who latches on to happiness, and gives it away freely, as Zena did. Zena Fishbane will be remembered as an entrepreneur, a business owner, sisterhood president, and most reliable synagogue volunteer alongside her beloved. She did needlework and knitted. She read, she loved crossword puzzles and mahjong. She was always busy. Thanks to Catherine, Zena loved TikTok too. And Kevin, you and Bubby shared a love of sports. When the clock hit zero at the end of every Bears win, you could count on a text from Bubby Z immediately. Those texts were never to be shared with anyone else. We'll keep those to ourselves. Most importantly, though, Zena will be remembered as a beloved wife, caring mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. And she will be remembered for her neshama, her beautiful soul, her kindness, her unconditional love. I'd like to invite everybody here and the many, many, many family and friends who are joining us remotely to call to mind now your fondest memory. Mom, your grandmother, Bubby, your great-grandmother. Maybe it was an interaction you shared Maybe the way she made you feel. Together we remember all of those moments we shared. The times of warmth and closeness, of love and companionship. 
and we commit to treasuring all that was good in her life and pray to retain that good as part of the very fabric of our lives. Our tradition teaches Zecher Tzadik Levracha, the memory of the righteous will be for blessing. May Zina always live on in our hearts. May we think of her tenderly and revere her memory. May her memory lead us to love, and then indeed will that memory be for blessing. Pause now for just a moment of silent reflection and remembering. the rising of the sun and in its going down we will remember her the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter we will remember her in the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring we will remember her in the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of the sun we will remember her in the rustling of the leaves and the beauty of autumn we will remember her. The beginning of the year, and when it ends, we will remember her. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember her. When we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember her. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember her. So long as we live, she too will live. She is now a part of us as we remember her. El Mali Rachamim, God of compassion, we pray the words of this traditional funeral prayer. And if you're feeling able, I'd invite you to stand now. El male rachamim, shochen bamromim, mitzei, menucha nachana tachat kanfea shchina, im kroshim utoharim, kazohar harakia masirim, et nishmat yaki renu, shalachala ulama, bala rachamim, yasti reha beseter kanafavla ulamim, vitror bisorachayim, et nishmata, aronai hu nachalata, vitanuach bashalom al mishkava, and Omar, Amen. God of abundant mercy, God most high, may the soul of our loved one who has gone into eternity find the gift of perfect peace in your embrace. Together with the holy and pure whose light shines like the radiance of heaven. Compassionate God, hold Zena close to you forever so that her soul may be bound up in the bond of life eternal. May she rest in peace. We say together, Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to come forward or place some earth into the grave, the tradition is three measures of earth without handing the shovel from person to person. Then the rabbi will continue with the Kaddish. Then for those of you who wish to witness the grave covering, you can do so. Uh, we also have sanitizer after you touch the shovel. You can cover it either side. Uh, Friends, we'll come back together to offer words of Kaddish.
May the love and eternal connection of our souls give us strength as we turn to recite the words hallowed by time. Sanctifying the name of God, we honor the memory of Zena with the words of this Kaddish prayer. Itkadal, itkadash, shemei rabba, be'alma, divara, chirute, ve'amlich, malchute. Be'chayechon, ve'omechon, chaye dechol beit Yisrael, ba'agala uvizman kariv ve'imru. Amen. Yehei shmei rabba mevorach le'olam ulmei almaya. Yitbarach, v'yishtabach, v'yitpa'ar, v'yitramam, v'yitnase. V'yitadar, v'yitale, v'yitalal, shmei dekudsha, b'richu. V'eila min kol b'irchata v'shirata, tushbechata v'nechemata, da'amiran be'alma v'imru. Amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shamaya, v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. Mru, Amen. O say shalom bimromav, hu ya ase shalom, aleinu ve alko Yisrael, bimru, Amen. Zichron alav racha, may Zina's memory be for a blessing. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who wish to witness the interment, you can stay. The gentleman will start closing the grave. Memorial contributions in her memory to the North Shore Congregation Israel or cradles to crayons. For those of you who are here, that information is on the service folder. And for those of you joining us online, that information is on the Funeral Homes website. This concludes the services here and we are going to turn off the streaming portion. <laughs>